Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Living, Loving, and Learning Together. I'm Crystal, and here on my channel, I share things related to mom life, family life, homeschool, and faith. I am a homeschooling mom of three girls, ages eight months, four years, and seven years. And today, I'm going to be sharing about how we do homeschool. So if you are interested in getting some different ideas or just some perspective on what homeschooling life looks like and different ways for these age ranges, I'm gonna be sharing how we started out when I just had one all the way to how we do it today now that we've added a baby into the mix. I hope that you'll stick along and I hope you're able to find a few good tips that may help you along your homeschooling journey. So grab a drink and a comfy spot to sit and I'll share how we do homeschool. Okay, so for the preschool age, we started very simple. It was a lot of fun, a lot of reading, and a lot of togetherness and doing things in groups and just exploring our world at that very fundamental age where they're learning and seeing everything new for the first time. So during the preschool age, we did a few things. Number one was lots and lots of reading aloud. Just time on your lap, time on the couch, where we would read picture books. You know, those first word books for babies and toddlers where they describe different people and their jobs and what you call them, or just the shapes, the numbers farm animals, all those kind of basics, did a lot of reading of picture books. I think that's huge for preschool development is just that one-on-one -on -one time together going through books. But the second thing is we also made it a point to engage in our community resources like going to children's museums and circle groups and things like that where they could have that interaction with other kids their age and play and playing to learn. So we did once a week a wow group with our local children's museum and in that session they would introduce a new letter, read a book, do a craft, and hands-on learning style play and they would do it together in a group setting. So we did uh, lots of reading, lots of those groups once a week and then we started to incorporate preschool prep which I cannot recommend enough for homeschooling parents. They have gotten a system down that kids seem to get it. We've taught both of our two girls all of their letters, letter sounds, and the basics for learning how to read through preschool prep and it's been very, very effective. Uh, they are like 20 to 30 minute videos that are slow paced and basically it will introduce like a letter and then it repeats it in different tones and it's the letter is moving across the screen really slowly but then they introduce kind of a picture story to go with whatever it is they're introducing. Check it out if you haven't seen them yet. I think they're well worth looking into because this is really what took our girls to another level. Both of my girls so far have really enjoyed watching them. This first pack comes with so much of the basics. Letters, colors, shapes, sight words, phonics, numbers, and they are all very, very helpful. Once we got through preschool prep and the kids had learned their letter sounds, their letters, and were ready to start applying that and reading, we moved on to Bob books. This is what they look like. And um, they have collections about, I think it goes up to six collections, but it starts at a pre-reading phase and it goes into a beginner phase, advanced beginners, and then it goes into like, rhyming words, first stories and things like that. So Bob books was another great tool in our homeschooling supplies. The next thing that we introduced at an early age was morning binders. And this was an idea I got from, I think it was a blog called Yoga Pants and Pearls. I will recheck that and put that in the comments below so that we have that correctly. But basically a morning binder, you cover some of the basics when they get to an age where they are ready to start learning some of the fundamental educational things. So in our morning binders, I included some additional things that I thought were important for our family. So we included a daily affirmation into the first page and basically it just includes promises and truths and things that I wanted to make sure were ingrained into their little hearts. So this is the day that the Lord has made and then we talk about how they can do all things, they have the mind of Christ, they are smart, their brain is amazing, those kind of things that are affirming and really good for them to have from the very beginning. So just a daily affirmation. 
Then they would put a sticker in the book for every day that they completed the pages that were included. And that way it made it fun and rewarding and not so much of a task driven thing at such a young age. So the morning binder includes uh, letter tracing. Hope that glare is not too much, but letter tracing. You just put these in sheet protectors and then they use a dry erase marker to go over them. The next thing is the daily calendar. And as we went through these, I would start teaching them the uh, days of the week song, the days of the month song, so that we could start getting that in memory. And then after that, there is some Bible and scripture memory verses. And so for these, I used what was there and then added to it because I think those character building scriptures and truths are so important for the foundational levels. And then we would do a Bible craft through a book like this. This is called Teaching Children to Pray. And inside, they basically will introduce a subject and um, walk you through what to say to your kids, what scriptures to look at, and then they have like a craft that goes with it. But books like this were very ha handy in the beginning. We actually just used this one for both kids in those first three and four year old age range. We also did fun things like puzzles. So I got these sequencing puzzles. You can find these at places like Costco or even Target on Amazon, I'm sure. Um, but sequencing type puzzles where they're seeing what comes first and next and after that. Of course, uh, these come also in kits where it has not just the numbers, but it also has reading where they can put together the words and the sounds and then each piece is a different sound and then also roles like this is a police officer so it shows you the police officer and the things that would go with that police officer kits like this puzzle kits were great for ages three and four then we also did brain quest and basically what they are is by age so this is the first one age two to three uh it'll talk about different questions to build your toddler's word skills and so they have a parent guide of how to use it but uh, an example is here is spring and then they ask you different questions about what you see in the picture that relate to spring or they'll show you ones like this uh, what pet is this where do pet fish live and then they're seeing the picture and then the kids are giving the answer. What color is the fish? So basic things like that. These brain quests come in all ages. Great tools to use in the early phases of homeschooling because you can put it in your purse, you can take it wherever you go. And uh, both of my kids have loved these for both of their ages. They're pretty fun to go through and answer together. So um, that is brain quest. At that same phase, we started to introduce other types of books where they could incorporate pen control and handwriting and using a pencil. These were some of our favorite books for that. And then when we were ready to start adding in workbook type material, I actually went to the dollar store, which actually had a great homeschool section for things like phonics, uh, reading. And in the beginning, it was very simple. I just put together this little caddy which had our pencils and crayons and then simple books that we could rotate through at that age. They really do keep pretty well stocked with basic books like this. Test preps, um, first words, reading, shapes, coloring, you name it. They have lots of great homeschool type resources there when, when you're just at the beginning level and you don't need a lot of bulk. Along with that, we started to incorporate a book like this for each phase. So either the scholastic type books or these brain quest books that you can go through. And it basically has, just has a year's supply of questions and pages, going through numbers, coloring, um, all the things that your children would know at different ages to make sure that we are covering all the grounds. So we started to incorporate books like that before we bought curriculum. Then moving on to the time when we started curriculum, we moved into using Classical Conversations. Classical Conversations is amazing because it incorporates community as well as curriculum. It helped me as a homeschooling mom because it covers 
all the main subjects. So it has math, science, English, geography, history, a timeline of our of our existence from creation to today. It even covers art and then hands-on science. And so the way that Classical Conversations works is that you use your CC guide for uh, each week and it tells you what your child is supposed to learn from all those seven subjects in that week. But in addition to what you're covering for that memory work in that week, each family can join the community where you meet one day a week and then you're in person engaging in a very exciting way of learning all these subjects and all this information in class. So I like Classical Conversations because it covers so much ground, it's faith-based, and it includes a very good avenue for community for your kids and for you as a homeschooling parent. So. Classical Conversations was the curriculum that we picked. Classical Conversations, though, does not drill in reading and the depths of math. So we needed to get a curriculum for those things. And so for our daughter's first year of curriculum, we landed on master books. So we used their math lessons for a living education. Master books is amazing. I will do another review just on master books and um, classical conversations so that you can see more in depth of how they work. Uh, but we love this curriculum because it's very interesting for the child, but not too overly complex. These lessons are about 20 to 30 minutes per lesson, if that sometimes. Um, and at this beginner level, it's very important to me that I am establishing a love of learning for my daughters. And so I'm trying not to drill in uh, overly just repetitive or intense things that can get to that place of boredom. Um, so for me, I liked the, the intensity level of this curriculum. I like that it is faith-based and I like that we can open it up, read through what's going to be done quickly, and um, we, we can dedicate about 20 to 30 minutes to it. I like that it has fun elements. I like the visuals and uh, she actually really enjoys this set as well. So um, highly encourage master books. And then we did the same curriculum master books for language arts. So this is language lessons for living education, their level one book. And that came with two readers that came along with it that are incorporated within the curriculum. Uh, I like this for the same reasons. Like I said, I will do a more in-depth review of these in another video. So we did Classical Conversations, Master Books for the Curriculum, and then we started incorporating more of a Bible in curriculum for her as well. And we also went through Master Books for that. So this is called More Than Words. It's by Rebecca Spooner through Master Books. And we have thoroughly enjoyed this Bible curriculum. Uh, it includes picture studies, uh, scripture memory, journals from children that kids can relate to that introduce different Bible concepts and things that they need to learn throughout the lessons. Uh, it also has flashcards that the kids create each week for their key truths and then lots of different coloring pages for each lesson that um, go back and recover what was learned for that lesson. So I highly encourage this Bible curriculum. So after that first preschool phase and our older daughter got into first grade and we started adding curriculum to her plate, then we started having where we would do more of a school morning time together. And if the youngest who was three or four wanted to participate, she was welcome to, especially for the beginning. And then we would let her go and do puzzles or watch a preschool prep video or play free time after that. But the structure of our morning is that we get up, have breakfast, get our morning, a quick 15 minute cleanup, brush teeth, make beds, get ready for the day. Sometimes we don't always get ready for the day. Sometimes we just hang out in comfy clothes. Uh, but we typically try to time the start of school around when River, our eight month old, uh, goes down for a nap. So then we've got some solid quiet time and focus time to do school together with just the two older ones. But then once we start, it basically looks like this. 
we will sit down and have a time of sharing what are we thankful for and we'll start with prayer and just thanking God for what we're thankful for. Uh, at that time, we also do, I will play on my phone, uh, mindful moments where they have the kids mindfully take deep breaths in and out uh, through different activities, whether they're blowing out a candle or um, blowing at a buzzing bee, different things that she does. It's called Mindful Moments. If you'd like to check it out, it's on Spotify. So we do one of those to kind of set our minds right for preparing ourselves to learn. Then we'll do a prayer and then we'll do a devotion. For devotions, I will usually read through one of these books. This is the story for children. We also have the Jesus Storybook Bible. Indescribable, sometimes we'll go through these. These are great Bible devotions that incorporate science lessons and they have great pictures, great amazing facts in there. Uh, sometimes they include funny tidbits, but this is one of our favorite ways to do devotionals. And these two are, I think, from the same developers. It's Zonder Kids, but they have one for the little ones and one for older children. We started out going through all of these together. I would read one story per day after we prayed. And then once we went through that, then we started going through the, big, the book for the older children. And so we'll pray, we'll read one of the stories, and then we talk about it together. What questions we have, what things were funny, um, and then talk about kind of how would that apply today. I always just try to find a way that it applies to our lives today. So after devotions, then we would move into a memory verse. Either Sparrow would start her Bible curriculum, which we would pull a memory verse from there, or I might have had something on my heart that we're remembering together as a family. And so uh, we would usually put a memory verse to song or a chant or something like that. After that, then we break out into the morning binders. So our toddler was not quite yet at, they were three years apart. So our toddler was not quite yet at an age where we needed to make sure that she was doing school every day. So what we did was we made school an option. So she would continue with her morning binder if she was wanting to participate in school at the table with Big Sis, which often happened because if Big Sis was doing it, she wanted to do it. So she would do her morning binder and her binder then consisted of very simple things. So colors, she would color in uh, each of the colors with dry erase mark. Shapes, I had her trace the shapes. And the weather, she would just jot down what the weather was like, how she felt that day. And I created a page for numbers and then counting. So she would trace the number and count how many objects were under each number. And then the last two pages were writing out the numbers and tracing the alphabet. And then when she's doing that, our oldest will start her curriculum. So she usually starts with her uh, Bible lesson and then she goes into her math curriculum and her language arts curriculum, both through Masterbooks. And while we're doing that, Sky will be released to do a puzzle or watch a preschool prep video or just go and play something fun and quiet while big sis finishes up the rest of her schooling and so that's when we'll do more of her curriculum study and um, focus on more of the memory work that we are learning for that week in classical conversations and so that's kind of the flow of our day after our oldest is done with all of her curriculum work then we move on to lunch and free time making sure we get outside play maybe incorporate a fun a fun project that we're doing for that time of year or we'll mix that up with doing extracurricular things like ballet sports swimming going to the ymca and things like that and um, depending on how the day goes, I usually try to use the afternoon or the evening bedtime to make sure that we get in our read aloud, whichever read aloud we're on at that time. I try to make it a point to get that in though, just because reading aloud is so huge, developing that love for reading and going on that adventure through story time. Uh, we had a time where my oldest had learned to read, she learned all her letter sounds, she had it down, and then she just kind of lost interest in reading. And uh, that's when I learned the true value of reading aloud. I would just start picking up books and reading them myself out loud to them. And 
that really took her on a journey of realizing, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. She got to a point where she would say, mom, let's not stop at that chapter. Can we just read one more chapter, one more chapter? And it really uh, started in her the love of the journey and the story time that you're going through with reading aloud. I might have to do a whole separate video on read alouds just because I'm very passionate about it and I've seen the effectiveness of it. Uh, but read aloud is huge. We try to make sure that we get that in at some point in our day, uh, whenever possible. Another way that we include reading aloud throughout the week is that uh, we'll take one day a week for most of the year, we did this last year, where we did a poetry tea time. And so, so fun. Basically, it's time where we invite a few friends over or just do it, the three of us. And we'll have yummy treats and drinks and have wonderful books to read and share on lessons about living and fun things that we are learning during that time of the year. I will post another video about poetry tea time because there's lots to share, but that is how we do homeschool around here. I hope you've been able to grab some tips or some ideas. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you next time.